Hey guys, I'm Burt Wagner and I'm here with Drew Ferjewell at Sequel Saturday Pittsburgh where Drew is going to give us his three favorite power shell tips. Right, so thanks Bert, thanks for having me. I'm a big fan of your videos. So, you know, when I tell people who are starting out with writing SQL Server and PowerShell, you know, there's there's basically three things that I say. And, you know, there's a lot of different command lists and there's a lot of different things you can be using out there to work with PowerShell, but the biggest one is, is make sure you're working with the newest version of the module. And the newest version of the module is SQL Server. And you can get that from the PowerShell gallery. And the PowerShell gallery is great because now you can install the module without having to actually install SSMS anywhere which is really, really nice for working with servers where maybe you want SQL Server uh, commandlets and SQL Server functionality for your scripts, but maybe you don't want to install SSMS, right? And the PowerShell gallery is great because even if you don't have Windows Management Framework 5, you can save the module on your local machine, copy it out to whatever server you want, put it there, and then use it. <laughs> and uh, that's probably tip number one that I would say is, okay. you know, if you're not using that today, make sure you start using uh, the SQL Server module from the PowerShell gallery. And the second one is, um, you know, never to control the user's output. You know, one thing that I, one thing that I really, really stress to people is, uh, I think people are used to using things like write host or, uh, you know, having prompts in their scripts or things like that. And that's just something that I like to stay away from just because you want scripts to be able to be run and not really do anything. And the other thing is, is if you do have to do output, use things like write verbose or write warning or write debug. Those are really nice things. That way, if the user wants that output or wants that logging, you leave the control up to them. Likewise, kind of tied onto that same tip, is I like to make sure that when you're, when you're writing scripts and functions or anything in PowerShell, that you make sure that you always return an object to the user, right? You don't just, it's kind of the opposite of having no output, right? You want your scripts and your functions and your command lists to return something back to the user that they can use and say, I was successful or no, I wasn't successful, or here's what I did. And you get that in an object that they can then reference or use in the pipeline uh, for scripts or anything else down the line, or command lists, functions, whatever. And the third thing is, is, you know, this whole time I've been hitting in the face, that's because I haven't told these people to stop. And now I'm telling you to stop. And the stop reason, hitting him, guys. stop hitting me now. <laughs> so the reason for that is, is that by default, when you encounter an error or a warning in PowerShell, your scripts don't stop. And okay. it's important that when you're using scripts, especially scripts that you want to share with other people or use in production, you need to plan for worst case scenario. And you do that through things like error action and telling it to stop or silently continue, continue, anything like that. Uh, or you can have warning actions to suppress your warnings or output them. So make sure you're including that, and you get that functionality by using command line binding in your functions and your scripts as well. So it's important to make sure you can account for failure, because PowerShell lets let you do amazing things with automation, but it also will let you fail with scale. And that's just general advice for any type of PowerShell scripting, whether it's with SQL Server or whether it's with, uh, you know, Windows scripting or anything like that. So, I mean, I guess those are kind of my three things that I always tell people to start with. Always remember to tell PowerShell to stop. Yeah, you, yeah. Make sure, <laughs> make sure you account for problems. Or else, PowerShell will keep slapping you in the face. Well, Drew, thank you very much for your three tips. I appreciate that, especially not knowing too much PowerShell myself. But, uh, guys, follow Drew on Twitter. I'll flash his handle down below, and uh, he talks about PowerShell. He talks about sending SQL servers to space in weather balloons. If you haven't checked that out, be sure to do it. It's really awesome. Um, you're speaking at Summit this year. I am. Right? So we talking go, about go see Server him there. Show, Say yeah. hi. Uh, and that's it. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Thanks, so, Bert. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> hey, guys. I'm Bert Wagner, and here I am with Drew Ferg. I've already forgot. <laughs> <laughs> walk up. Let's do a test run. Just like walk up. I'm going to try to keep like right. focused on Bert so I don't like flinch too much. Right. But it's just going to be like a quick tap. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like that. I think that was pretty awesome. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was too scared.